So is anybody even watching this show? Alright, so three things, my dear viewers. One, I watched episodes two and three of Marvel's Secret Invasion last night. Two, I just found out that this show only has six episodes, so we're already halfway through and nothing has happened. And three, most importantly, is anyone even watching this show? The thought first came to my mind pretty much immediately after watching, a feeling that I didn't really have or have to go through after episode one, but when collecting my thoughts on these episodes overall, I found myself in a place where I had absolutely nobody to share them with. Not a sole friend, family member, girl at the local pub, or even a Marvel fanboy. Even when taking your talents to the always tried and faithful apps like YouTube or Twitter, nope nothing not even trending no discourse whatsoever and while i don't relatively see much hating going on for the show except for the fact that maybe it's boring i'm starting to think that this is even worse than hate watching i'm starting to see the vision that jessica gao had with she hulk they may not like it but damn it they're gonna watch a plus jessica the worst part is i don't even know how to review a show that seems as if everybody should be watching but yet, no one is, which is very unfortunate because the show itself isn't bad at all. From a studio that has released eight Disney Plus TV shows, all ranging from pretty much dog shit on a screen to mid at its very best, I would easily be able to argue that Marvel's Secret Invasion is one of the best Marvel Disney Plus shows thus far. And while people can say that they enjoyed WandaVision, or Loki, or Moon Knight, or whatever that show might be, and while of course that is all just opinion based, I mean, who am I? I'm just a guy talking to my computer. But I can confidently say that most, if not all of these Marvel Disney Plus TV shows have been one and done's, in and outs, no rewatchability aspects to them whatsoever. And while I'm not here to argue that Marvel's Secret Invasion has any of those qualities or stands so tall above the others in the desolate wasteland that Marvel Studios has become, I can say that the production value is here. The dialogue isn't as spotty as it has been in previous TV shows. The characters don't range from brainless cans of sardines to your best friend who's been hit too many times in the head with a dodgeball growing up. And you know exactly who I'm talking about. Anyway, it just shows the fan apathy and pretty much brand self-destruction that Marvel has placed upon itself with its own shitty product. Marvel truly had the cinema world in their hands just five years ago. Easy money making for the rest of their days. Audiences that were never going to let the brand die after the grand scope of cinema that was Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. At least as long as they wanted to take care of the supply for the demand. And that's where we run into one of our main problems when it comes to Marvel's secret invasion. It's just a little bit too late. As I've said, with the declining quality in MCU content not only on the small screen but on the big screen over the past three to four years, what hubris would you have to have in order to even conceive that audiences would still be interested in your said product? And while I mention that in my opinion, I believe Secret Invasion is up there with one of the best MCU Disney Plus shows, I have to make it such a statement because these shows are just so bad that it doesn't even matter that it's one of the best. If you watched my first video recapping episode 1, actually, no, who am I kidding? You didn't even watch the show itself. But for me, it was about one character. One more character that I still had faith in when it came to the character assassination that has been plaguing the MCU. Nick Fury. A character that I believe was the glue of the MCU always keeping the other supporting or main characters in the loop with current events to not make the timeline feel as inconclusive as it seemed now. I mean, again, does Black Cap even know that Shang-Chi exists? Or that there was a big kaiju battle in the middle of Egypt? Or that a floating city that controlled hundreds of thousands of Black Widow assassins and every aspect of the MCU's power structure has even been destroyed, with God knows where it actually landed and probably destroyed a town or city? You're starting to get my point here. Without Nick Fury, the MCU is truly nothing. Just an unorganized landscape of events that just happen and are forgotten in T-minus 5 seconds. Oop, yep, already forgot. 
And while yes, actually, kind of, Samuel Jackson is still portraying the same character of Nick Fury that I know, and is back on Earth and dealing or trying to deal with things his way, it leads to our second, and very much our main topic of the video, and problem of the show as a whole. These stakes are immense. I know that we as fans like to make fun and like to imagine the comedy that is more than likely happening in the Marvel War Rooms after the success that was the Infinity Saga and Endgame itself with Thanos, constantly trying to put their three collective coked out brain cells together to up the stakes each and every time, bigger and newer like a child, without ever taking into account the massive effects and implication that these events would have on the world as a whole. And while any idiot can give you one example, I'll give you two. Remember Black Widow? Ah, <sighs> Scarlett Johansson. Man, we really took you for granted, my girl. Please come back and save the writing of our female characters. Point is, Black Widow as a film established that not only were there brainwashed sleeper agents spread across the entirety of the globe, but tens of thousands of them, with only the red gloop to save them from their lives of Black Widow assassins. Right, you probably didn't remember until I just mentioned it, because it was never mentioned again in the MCU. And while, yes, it was mentioned at the end of the movie that Yelena was going to be on a mission to free those women, it would take months, years, to achieve such a feat. Even with the help of the Task Mistress, who we have also never seen or heard from again, even with Yelena showing up in Hawkeye, where is the Task Mistress? Is she freeing Black Widows from enslavement? Are those Black Widows still carrying out sleeper missions even without the orders of Dracoff? Who knows? Who cares? Marvel doesn't. Or say the Book of Bashanti from Doctor Strange Mom. You see, the problem with McMuffins is when introduced, you pretty much have to explain why these god-tier McMuffins weren't used in the first place against our most powerful villains. I mean, it was shown to us in Doctor Strange Mom that the Darkhold in the Book of Bashanti itself was strong enough to destroy Thanos, but yet, that didn't show up in the 14 million outcomes from Infinity War? It's unfortunate, and I don't want to rant about past Marvel and how unrecognizable and shit it's become now. The point I'm trying to make here is that a scroll invasion of Earth is pretty much the biggest stakes to date, depending on how you look at erasing half of the universe compared to the complete extinction of the human race. With hundreds of thousands of scrolls already on Earth, it truly begs the question how fucking stupid Nick Fury really is. A true bumbling idiot can understand the gravity of a situation where people can shapeshift into whoever they want, whenever they want, with the power or technology to also take your memories. Truly a meta-defining ability. For Nick Fury to be so nonchalant through these three episodes clearly shows that, yet again, the writers in the Marvel War Rooms have absolutely no idea the undeniably losing stakes that they have now put against our protagonist. With the pacing as boring and frustrating as setting up an Ikea desk, I have no idea how they plan to wrap up these type of stakes, which would be absolute lunacy if they wrap them up with only three episodes left, or if they plan to continue these stakes going forward into Phase 5 and beyond, which would also be incredibly stupid, seeing how they can't even manage the world-building stakes of the multiverse saga that they've been painfully trying to pull off, let alone continuing to try to introduce new elements and characters still because Marvel just can't help themselves, even characters like Echo and Agatha and Ironheart, oh my god! I truly pray for Marvel. Eventually, they'll just have to release the data to the public to see how many people are watching Secret Invasion, and it's going to be very interesting to see if it's more lowly watched than even Miss Marvel or Moon Knight, whose shows also weren't really that bad. And like I mentioned before, with the immense success that was Marvel's phases 1 through 3, I wouldn't say that the MCU has reached quite the levels of fan apathy and brand self-destruction of the levels of Lucasfilm and Star Wars just yet. But we're getting there, and it's fast-tracking. With the Marvels, Loki Season 2, and Echo on the horizon to wrap up 2023, I can't imagine a scenario where the profit margins don't look like Tommen from Game of Thrones. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. 
Obviously, as you can see now, this was not a recap or review of the episodes I've seen so far. Just a general question to the audience if anyone is watching this show as a whole. I'll more than likely just review the show in its entirety at the end, so stay tuned for that. And actually comment down below how you feel about Marvel's Secret Invasion. Anything. Please. Just someone tell me that you're watching. Make sure to go check out my last video because that's how the YouTube algorithm works and... Come on, it's Indiana Jones. It's been a long time since we got into some true slander. That video was great. But again, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.